الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته how is everyone doing hope you all doing good we welcome you to another episode of morning tea talaqi and tadabbur where we will get our morning dose of tea not that tea but Tea being talaqi and tadabbur Talaqi meaning we recite a few verses from the Quran And then the second T is tadabbur Where we will reflect and contemplate upon some of the verses that we have read Or the gist of it, inshallah So, first and foremost, as per normal We start our session with Al-Fatiha In the hopes that it will be a beneficial one And that it will serve as a kickstart to a productive day ahead insyaallah ala hadhihi niyyah wa kullu niyyatin salihah al-fatiha a'udzu billahi minash shaitanir rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin arrahmanir rahim maliki yawmiddin iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين امين so inshallah in this session we will be reciting the first page of surah an-nisa and Surah An-Nisa, the first page contains verse number one all the way till number six. And Alhamdulillah, we have reached the beginning of Surah An-Nisa. Who thought we will be here? When I mean, we first started, we started with Al-Baqarah. And now, after many episodes, we have come to the first page of An-Nisa. Alhamdulillah, may Allah accept all our deeds. And we will continue with our recitation with the first page of An-Nisa, which if you have your Mus'haf with you, is on page 77, and as mentioned, is verses number 1 all the way till 6. Okay, let us begin, inshaAllah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem, bismillahirrahmanirrahim. يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وآتوا اليتامى أموالهم ولا تتبدلوا الخبيث بالطيب ولا تأكلوا أموالهم إلى أموالكم إنه كان حوبا كبيرا 
وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَلَّا تُقْسِطُوا فِي الْيَتَامَى فَانْكِحُوا مَا طَابَ لَكُمْ فَانْكِحُوا مَا طَابَ لَكُمْ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ مَثْنَى وَثُلَاثَ وَرُبَاعَ فَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا فَوَاحِدَةً أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ ذَلِكَ أَدْنَى أَلَّا تَعُولُوا وَآتُوا النِّسَاءَ صَدُقَاتِهِنَّ نِحْلَةً فَإِن طِبْنَ لَكُمْ عَنْ شَيْءٍ مِّنْهُ نَفْسًا فَكُلُوهُ فَكُلُوهُ هَنِيئًا مَرِيئًا وَلَا تُؤْتُوا السُّفَهَاءَ أَمْوَالَكُمُ الَّتِي جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ قِيَامًا التي جعل الله لكم قياما وارزقوهم فيها واكسوهم وقولوا لهم قولا معروفا وابتلوا اليتامى حتى إذا بلغوا النكاح فَإِنْ آنَسْتُمْ مِنْهُمْ رُشْدًا فَادْفَعُوا إِلَيْهِمْ أَمْوَالَهُمْ وَلَا تَأْكُلُوهَا إِسْرَافًا وَبِدَارًا أَنْ يَكْبَرُوا وَمَنْ كَانَ غَنِيًّا فَلْيَسْتَعْفِفْ وَمَنْ كَانَ فَقِيرًا فَلْيَأْكُلْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ فَإِذَا دَفَعْتُمْ إِلَيْهِمْ أَمْوَالَهُمْ فَأَشْهِدُوا عَلَيْهِمْ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ حَسِيبًا صدق الله العظيم So Alhamdulillah, we have just finished reciting the first page from Surah An-Nisa and before we continue to contemplate upon uh, the verses we have read it is best if we give a brief intro on the Surah itself and Surah An-Nisa An-Nisa in essence means woman hmm. so just from knowing that an-nisa means woman we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dedicated a full surah okay, surah an-nisa to woman mean to say that women uh, have a high status or high rank in Islam itself that is just in the name of the surah and the contents of the surah it focuses a lot on um, the social norms, okay, the social aspect of life, how um, we should treat women, okay, in the part of uh, marriage or in the part of uh, divorce. Uh, so all of these um, uh, hukums, all of these dealing social norms, how. Uh, does Islam approach these uh, social norms? Uh, it is all mentioned here in Surah An-Nisa and with high emphasis on uh, safeguarding the welfare of women. Uh, so it is very funny when uh, we notice uh, some people claim that we or rather the religion Islam oppresses women, okay, forcing her to cover up and what not. So number one, we should take heart that all these rulings were from the divine scripture, the Quran. And who was the one that uh, sent down the Quran? None other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Hakim. 
the wise one so any ruling that is um, sent down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is nothing but full of wisdom full of his wisdom and that also his rulings uh, serve none other than to bring benefit to mankind right so that's number one and also to those that claim that Islam uh, doesn't appreciate women it does it has a whole surah it benefited uh, dedicated uh, to women and its contents it has many uh, it addresses many social norms which seem like women are at the negative end but Islam addresses this and to safeguard the chastity the welfare of women okay and not only that the contents also focuses on other social norms okay for example um, the act of giving in charity okay and what are its motives and how you should properly deal um, with this uh, aspect okay when we give to people um, we should ensure we manage the administ- administrative parts um, um, properly and also we should strive to give those uh, give to those in need such as the yatama and many others okay so that is just a brief introduction about surah an nisa okay which means woman a surah which is dedicated to safeguarding the welfare of women in many social norms such as marriage and divorce and also focuses on other social aspects of life such as um, giving to the poor and how we should properly uh, how we should properly administrate such norms right and from the page that we read one verse that i would like to focus on is verse number three which highlights a very um what i would call it controversial topic it's not under 10 polygamy uh, okay here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions wa in khiftum ألا تقصدوا في اليتامى فانكحوا ما طاب لكم من النساء مثنى وثلاث ورباع فإن خفتم ألا تعدلوا فواحدة أو ما ملكت أيمانكم ذلك أدنى ألا تعولوا which means if you fear that you will not deal fairly with the orphan girls you may marry whichever woman uh, who seem good to you two three or four if you feel that you cannot be just or equitable to them then marry only one or your slaves that is more likely to make you avoid bias okay so as mentioned this verse touches on the controversial topic of polygamy and polygamy uh, as we all know uh, men are allowed to marry women Uh, up till a maximum of four okay, so there's one as a minimum and four as a maximum and here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions an important uh, factor for men okay, to have if they were to uh, engage in polygamy which is um, adil okay, al-qist being just being accountable so this aspect is important if you want to engage in polygamy and in a separate verse ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to the men walan tastati'u an ta'dilu bayna nisa walau harastum which means if you try your utmost best to be just uh, with your wives your many wives you will not do so uh, so this shows that being just okay, being idle to many wives is not an easy fit uh, and which is why Uh, you 
are not advised to as men to engage in polygamy as and when we like uh, so this is the hikmah behind uh, these two verses okay where in one verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions if you have adil feel free to uh, engage in polygamy but in a separate verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions if you try to be uh, just or if you try to be adil uh, in polygamy you will not um, you will not attain that okay, why? because the main point Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to uh, point out here is that when we want to engage in polygamy as men we have to seek the approval of the first wife first and then we have to ensure financially we are capable of bearing the cost hence this shows that at the end of the day Islam safeguards the welfare of women okay, because men cannot freely practice polygamy as and when they like they have to take into account the welfare of the woman their first wife make sure she is well off she is okay with uh, marrying of a second uh, her husband marrying of a second wife uh, so that is the main wisdom okay, behind the practice of polygamy a man cannot or a husband cannot practice as and when he likes he has to seek the approval of his wife and uh, make sure he is fully capable financially, socially, morally uh, so this in the end points out to us that Islam safeguards the interests of the woman and is not a patriarchic uh, religion. Uh, so we suffice with that reflection. May we continue to strive to understand the religion of Islam, which essentially safeguards the welfare of the community as a whole, especially women. Okay, thank you all for tuning in to this session. Hope it has been a beneficial one. And we thank you all for your support for Masjid Kampung Siklab's programs thus far. Do continue to support, donate uh, as much as you can to the numbers below. You can donate through PayNow, Fund Transfer and also the MOS website. And also if you find this beneficial, do like it and give it a share so that uh, others may benefit also. Okay, thank you once again for tuning in. See you in future sessions. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh.